National Governors Association is having their annual me meeting here in Boston as we speak. This means that Arizona no, Governor no. Jan Brewer is in our town right now. No. <laughs> so I think it's time that we give her the welcome that she deserves. So we're going to start this rally off by making it loud and clear. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El... Who's ready to give Jan Brewer a piece of our minds? Now I think when Jan Brewer signed into law SB 1070, she did two things. The first is that she ignited a national movement from the right that has criminalized immigrants in, you know, in, in Arizona, but also in Oklahoma, in Texas, and even here in Massachusetts. But I think that she's done something else, and something that she would never imagine she could possibly be doing. And that is that she has ignited a movement from our side, represented and led by undocumented youth and students who started this, the rebirth of this movement by sitting in, in Senator McCain's office in Arizona to fight for the DREAM Act. She has ignited a movement that has led seven undocumented youth to come out of the shadows in Chicago and talk about their experiences of what it means to be undocumented in this country where we don't have equality whether you're documented or undocumented. It has ignited a movement so that every single state and every single city where the Arizona Diamondbacks have played knowing that their boss, Ken Kendrick, has given over a million dollars to the Republican Party in the state of Arizona that has led this bill. In every single city where the Arizona Diamondbacks have played, we have been there outside protesting. And that was in San Francisco, in Chicago, in Tampa, and right here in Boston, Massachusetts. And also in Massachusetts, we saw the courageous leadership of the student immigrant movement that led a 24-7 indefinite vigil that lasted for 19 days and successfully defeated the draconian anti-immigrant amendments that were trying to be passed here in Massachusetts. Welcome to this park where we give our lessons of civility to uh, those people who are uh, full of hate because we are full of love. And I would love these days to take this opportunity to talk about my background my greatest uh, people in Honduras who are resistant to a military dictatorship support by the United States. But I'm not going to take the time be weak because we are, we are under attack. We are in a war with those reactionary forces, with those people full of hate. They don't want us to see our brown faces. They don't want to see our children get educated in our school because they are brown. They are not white. So you... So this racial profiling bill does not set right with us in this country. It does not set right for any of us that are under attack. I know Sarah Berlin might have said that we are all Arizona. No, she is not all Arizona. We, the working class, are all Arizona. And you believe that. economy is going to crash? We know that, don't we? 
educate each other. That's why we always have to be in solidarity. That's why we always have to come together. That's why we always have to unite around this struggle and any other struggle that profile and hurt the working class. Am I right? Compañeros, compañeras, estamos presentes en esta lucha por los derechos de los trabajadores inmigrantes y no inmigrantes. This is a struggle, not only for migrant workers. This is simply a struggle for all workers right here in the United States and in the world. We have spoken here today about unity and the need for unity. There is something we have to reflect upon, dear friends. There are many forces that fight for immigrant rights that are not present here today simply because those who actually issued the call for the fight are socialists. This is something that we have to address. We don't have to hide. We don't have to be afraid. This is something that we have to address in our movement. We must eliminate anti-communism in the struggle for migrant workers' rights. It doesn't make sense to me, and it never made sense for the Boston May Day Committee, that there are groups that say they represent the interests of migrant workers who are anti-socialist, who are anti-anarchists. We embrace the socialists and the anarchists because so we are, and it is not the Democrats, the ones that have actually championed the fights of the workers, but the socialists and the anarchists in this country. I also say that we have to reflect upon the lessons that are given us. And the youth, the student immigrant movement, gave us a significant lesson, gave us the lesson that it is necessary to carry out direct action, even if we have to put our lives on the line. Even if we have to put our comfort on the line. We, the elders in this struggle, salute the young people who have actually tell us what the way forward is. Please, let's welcome a child's peace from Bail Out the People Movement. I come here for Bail Out the People's Movement and represent all the hotel workers here in Boston and Massachusetts. And we're coming here to tell you that the labor is behind you because these laws are anti-worker laws. Let it be no doubt that every worker in this country and in the world are affected by these laws in a negative way. Our next speaker is going to be Jamir, a recent graduate of Fenway High School. Please let us all uh, say hi to him. I so I'm here today to only say that we didn't cross the borders, the borders crossed us, you know what I'm saying? I, I cannot hear that. And my, my, my question to y'all is, I see everybody here, everybody got something to say, but what's, what are we going to do after this? Because we keep complaining and complaining, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm 18, and I'm never going to vote in my life, because I'm not, I don't get to vote for a president, I just get a That's choice right. between two. What if I want to be a president? What about you? You feel me? So I'm saying we got to take over. This is all country. This is us. You feel me? But like I said, I'm just talking. What are we going to do about it? You know what I'm saying? We got to form something. Lincoln said the government should be ran by the people for the people. So what up? 
You feel me? I'm just saying. We need some more leaders up in this. All my leaders from from the 60s to here, like, I don't see no more leaders no more. Martin Luther King, all of them. Where they at? They gone. That's why us people, we're confused. We don't know what to do. We're like little rats in the lab. That's what we are. We rats in the lab. Come to the hood, all right? It is ridiculous. The way they treat us is ridiculous. So I'm just saying to my people and to everybody, we just need to form and make America what, what America really should be, us. I'm from the United Steelworkers Local 8751. We are distinguished to have the first AFL-CIO union resolution denouncing this scumbag, racist, fascist style law that they have in Arizona. Now right after we did that, we got a call from local 600 in the UAW. That's the home local of the new president of the UAW. And they had called us and fashioned their resolution on what we had done. We're proud of that. But I gotta tell you, as a union that's 90% Immigrant from Haiti, from Cape Verde, from Central and South America, that we don't just do resolutions. We don't talk the talk, we walk the walk. Now, our numbers may be small today, but we speak for the millions. And that's why I tell you, join whatever organizations you can. Organize, organize, organize. There is a right wing or foot that needs to be denounced. I am an Army veteran and I am with March Forward, an organization of veterans and service members and active duty service members. And we are here to, t to say that everyone who comes to this country to work, regardless of their immigration status, are our sisters and brothers. And we stand firmly against SB 1070, against all immigrant anti-immigrant laws, and we pledge to fight with you until there is full legalization for all immigrants. In a country that treats the undocumented as criminals, as less than humans, it is the height of hypocrisy that the number one target of military recruiters is undocumented youth. This government would be happy to offer you citizenship and a college education if you go kill other poor and oppressed people yes. in their racist wars. Right now, there are immigrants who still have not received citizenship being killed and maimed in Afghanistan and Iraq, being made to fight the same colonial U.S. policies that force immigrants into this country into the first place. But we say no more. Our fight is not against workers in other countries. Our fight is against Jan Brewer against all racist politicians, and against a system that destroys the lives of millions for a profit of the few.